Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and do what happens when you call tech support. First of all, you can create a folder like that by simply coming over to New Folder, clicking it, opens up a folder, and then you'll put some items in there. We'll get to that in just a second. So that's how you create a folder. Now in order to create a screenshot, up at the very top row of buttons on your keyboard you got a thing that says print screen. If you don't have some kind of a uh, Snagit or some other type of screen capture device, uh, hover snap or something, um, you simply click the print screen, you come and you open up the paint program and then you paste whatever you just captured. We'll go ahead and we'll come over here paste and there you go it saves it and that's the Windows paint program I'm going to go ahead and kill that or actually we'll just save as uh, untitled and we'll put it in there with the other ones I think I sent it in the right place let's check no, we don't want it to go there. We want it over here. We'll put it in there. So there's a capture of our basic desktop. Now, <clears throat> when you talk to a tech support person, typically there are certain questions that they will ask you or that you could have worked out ahead of time. Um, and those things would be such as when did you first notice this problem and this is just an example I just quickly put some junk in there um, oh I don't know about an hour ago what error messages or warnings came up in your screen uh, I don't know um, did the computer lose the mouse or keyboard functions yes restart on its own no and basically when we read through there for this particular problem it was something like I haven't restarted and checked yet but uh, it was a mouse problem and in that particular case it would be if you had an old style PS2 mouse and you connected and disconnected it to the little round port on the back uh, typically that won't happen with a USB it's called a hot device so you can you know plug and play you can plug it in pull it out plug it back in or connect and disconnect however you wanna phrase that when you put it in and out of a USB port it usually won't malfunction but on the older style keyboards and mice with the other old style connectors when it's running it may or may not shut the computer down but it will definitely stop functioning even if you reconnect it or you plug a different one if you take an old one out and reconnect the new one so you would answer those kinds of questions and they'll ask you that and the other thing they'd probably say to you if it was a USB device have you double checked or all the cables connected and you go oh no hang on just a second plug it back in hey my mouse is working now so that's some things you can do you can take this sample form and it has its own page on the website and you can go in there and you can fill this out as you're having the problem and then it also gives you some tips did I um, did I update anything uh, did I check the cables um, did I try to restart the computer and start over and try it again and get the same result you can do this prior to contacting tech support it makes life a little bit easier you can put it in here and have the answers already and tell a, a technician if they remote in say right here in this tech call folder is my answers to some of the questions the other thing you can look over those real quick see my screenshots and they'll look at that stuff and they may try to reduplicate replicate the uh, problem go in and do the same functions and see if it'll do it again so that's the reason for creating that it may be of absolutely no help but you know it's something to try and if you save something in there and you have to call back about the same issue the next tech 
might look and say, oh, you've left a thing in there of what they did last time, and then he'll check that right off the bat and see if it fixes it or not. So there you have that. You can make a screenshot. You can make a folder and put your screenshots in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a couple of things. Um, there's our screenshot, and we can sometime he'll say, well, what happened? Did you get an error message or did you get a screen popped up? If you had a virus or something, you might say, yeah, I copied this before I restarted the machine. This popped up there. This message came up there. Uh, and then it started acting funny like a virus. Um, so you can have that. Now, I'm going to show you how to get to a couple of these places, and I intentionally went in there and marked them up and did things to them for the sake of demonstration. Sometimes you'll be asked about system information. Uh, hey, have you checked your system information? Uh, do you know what kind of a system you're running? You go, oh, well, no, not really. Uh, have you go over to Accessories? It's in your Start menu, and there's a thing called System Tools. It has a whole bunch of these things, like the defragmenter that you use. And they'll say, well, click system information. And you'll get that screen there. And as I was saying, you can get these basic pieces of information here, where it tells you 32 or 64 base system, the kind of processor, the BIOS, the whole nine yards. You can screen capture that. Or also, if you go into the control panel, um, go to system. It has it there as well. And that's part of the screen. Well, I put it over here, didn't I? It's part of the screen capture that we have. If you want to take a screen capture like this, I've highlighted the information. Um, it tells you the type of processor, the number of cores, the whole nine yards, all that information they'd want to know about your motherboard and everything, what kind of windows you have, if it has a service pack, that's all there. Additional information, the device manager, if they want to know, they want to check and see if you've got certain equipment connected to uh, your computer and if it has drivers or shows any error messages, they would have you click right there, device manager advanced system settings right there um, that's you won't go in there very often but they might want to know if you have virtual memory or what they're calling um, if you have memory cached to speed your system up or however they might phrase that to you if they ask about that they might send you in there to the advanced system settings to look and see what kind of a page file or a, um, uh, well, I just said it a minute ago. In any event, that's one of the places you go. So if you're going to do something with the router, they may have you go to a routers page, and I'll show you where to get that from over here in the Start menu. If you go to Computer or if you go to Windows Explorer, it brings up a window and it has your computer and it also has your network and your network's going to have everything that's connected to the network it's turned on at the time and it could be printers and routers and all sorts of things could be in here and when you click on it then it brings up this page and it has the device web page it's usually going to be a 192 address or it could be a 10 something address but it's going to be uh, four sets of numbers with dots 192.168.1.254 um, so it could be any of those kinds of numbers will be the device web page what that means is if you open Internet Explorer and you type that address and hit enter it opens the device page where they'll go in and ask you to look at router settings they may ask you for the IP address or the hardware the piece of address for the router itself. All of these things, as you can see, are dotted and have different numbers. 
in there. This isn't information you'd share with other people, by the way, just randomly. Um, but it will have this information if for whatever reason you'd need that, that's there. And it also, um, there's another tab and then it goes in and like I say, if you enter that address and open it, they can have you do some things to change um, to change your router in case you're having a network problem. So that pretty much covers where to go to find a lot of things that people ask you. What's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the computer is to open the control panel either from there or from in the start button. Go in here and check these things. Click the action center. Uh, a lot of times you won't have any need for admin tools. You may not have some of these net session. You may not have a flash player installed. Some of these won't always be in here. You may not have real tech. You may have something else for a sound driver instead. So what's in yours will be different than what's in mine. I don't use DivX very often, but there's a control panel if I'd happen to need it. If you just go in here and you click and open these devices, whoops, go in there and open these devices, you can see what they are, what they do. Um, there's a way to go in here, click your driver, and then go in there and update your driver from there. And if you understand what all these things are, you can go in and you can make changes to equipment from some of the settings in there. I would recommend not going in there and doing that unless you're asked, but you can go in and you can open like sound and system and some of these recovery um, user accounts. I wouldn't go into a lot of those and play around with them and you know if you're not sure you might just create more problems than you need. And internet options. In another video I'm planning I'm going to go in and show you how to open this and I'm going to show you all the things that we used to walk people through. There's about eight steps of things you can go through on these tabs here. You go in and make different setting changes to uh, make Internet Explorer function better and to sometimes it'll cure problems that you're having with the system if you go in there. So um, just familiarize yourself with your computer and I'll put some more videos up and eventually you go through and find these, understand these things, and uh, it'll make your experience a little bit easier. Um, also, go back and look at the video more than once if you need to, to familiarize yourself with it. I know it's hard to, to get it, not be doing it at the same time you're looking at it, but you'll eventually catch it. These things are fairly simple before long. You may be learning how to make your own programs or something. So anyway, thank you. Take care.